Welcome to the Chainsys Data Integration Platform. In this video, we are going to see how quickly we can create an integration between Oracle, a relational database system, and Impala, a big database system. Let's log into the Chainsys platform. To define an integration, we need to have four basic components. The first is connection, which is establishing connectivity between the integration platform and the source and target systems. Then, data object, which is required to extract data from the source system. Then loader, which is required for loading data into the target system. And finally, data flow, which maps the source and target systems in column by column mapping. Let's see how the connections are defined. Here we have Oracle as a source connection. We'll use it as a source system. We have defined the IP, the host IP, port numbers, SID of the database, schema name and password, all by which we need to control the Oracle. Let's see the target connection. It's Impala 1. This is the target connection we will use. For the database information section, we have options like which agent should be used for loading data. So in our case, we have selected the Impala option. We can also use the Hive engine to load data. We have defined the host name of the database port number and database name, authentication type to connect to the system, in this case Kerberos, and we need to fill in the other Kerberos authentication fields. In the HDFS information section, we have the option to enable the edge node for moving files, and we have defined the URI of the HDFS, the directory path, and username of the HDFS system. So once we enter everything into the system, just save the connection. Now we're going to create the data object to extract information from the Oracle tables. Look for the connection where you want to create the data object. Click on the plus icon. Enter the name for the data object along with the alias name. Disable the staging option and save it. Once saved, go to the source definition. Select the table from the pop-up. Once you've selected the table, all of its columns are listed on here along with data type and length of the data type. Select all the columns. Save it. Once it's saved, compile the data object. Now we have created a data object successfully and compiled it. Now go back to the main menu. Click on the Loader Adapter menu to create a loader. On the Impala connection, click on the plus icon. Enter the name for the data loader. Disable the Stop at Prevalidation option. Save it. Go to the Table menu. Select the target table where you want the data loaded from the pop-up. Once you've selected a table from the pop-up, all of its columns are listed on the right along with data type. Select all the columns. Below the table name, we have several options to choose from. Insert, Update, Upsert, and the Bulk option, which is primarily used for importing data into Impala when there is a large volume of data. We've chosen the Bulk option. We also have Delimited By and Separator. These are both fetched from the table definition. In this case, the Delimited By is a comma, and the separator is backwards slash n. To add these columns to a data set, click on the data set option. Save the data set. And once the data set is saved, select the data set name and save the loader. Then go to the loader's first screen, more options, and compile. Now we have created a loader and compiled it successfully. Go back to the main menu. Now we are going to create a data flow to connect the source and target systems. We can enter the name for the data flow and define the data mart we want to use. 
So here, we can click on the Source tab. Select the data object from the source. This is the data object we have created. Drag and drop it into the Designer window and click on the Targets tab. This is the loader we have created. Drag it and drop it into the Designer window and click on the Transformations tab. Drop the mapper in between the data object and loader. Connect the output port of the data object to the input of the mapper and take the mapper output port and connect it to the input port for the loader. Click on the mapper and define a name for the mapper. Click on the Map by Name option to map all of the columns with common names between the source and target. Save it and close the window. Save the data flow and compile the data flow. So now we have completed the data flow creation and compiled it successfully. We'll execute the data flow by clicking on the Data Flow Workbench menu, searching for the data flow we created, and clicking on the Execute button. The data flow execution has started. It has extracted 10 records from the source system, and loading is completed. Click on End to view the loading summary. So in the loading summary, we can see the source and target systems. In our case, it's Oracle and Impala. This shows how many records have been processed in total, and the green chart shows the numbers that have succeeded. Process failures would be shown in the error chart, with errors classified by the terms on the right. Thank you for watching, and don't forget our other videos.